Hello, uh, another clinical chemistry review video on, uh, this one's on enzymes, AST and ALT. Right. Okay, let's first talk about the amino transferases. So uh, physiologically, they catalyze the transfer of amino groups from amino acids to form two oxoacids. AST makes L-glutamate and oxaloacetate and ALT makes L-glutamate and pyruvate. So um, yes, they uh, are able to modify amino acids, that's what they are, amino transferases. Uh, their clinical significance is they are both found in major organs, but AST is primarily found in the heart, liver, skeletal muscle, and kidney, and it is found, um, the cellular location is the cytoplasm and the mitochondria. And ALT is in the cytoplasm only of the cell, and it is primarily seen in the liver and in the kidney. Um, this is relevant because it can help you interpret um, the, the patterns of elevated AST or ALT. So obviously, for example, if they were both AST and ALT are elevated, then you would look like something like liver or potentially kidney, depending on what else is going on. But if only the AST was elevated and ALT was normal, then it might be heart or muscle. Okay, so um, the clinical uh, significance is AST and ALT are part of the Comprehensive Metabolic Panel, or the CMP. And uh, they're also part of the LFT or hepatic function, so liver function test, hepatic function panel, depending on the facility where you're at, um, meaning they um, measure, um, help measure what's going on with the liver, uh, which is different than the hepatitis one, right? So your AST and ALT are measured when you evaluate a patient for liver disease. That's one of their main goals. Uh, and you would expect them to be elevated in liver diseases. Um, they, uh, elevations of AST and ALT together, um, especially if you know there's some other liver stuff going on, can reflect what we call hepatocellular destruction. So they are um, located intracellularly in those uh, liver cells in the hepato hepatocytes. Um, and so uh, a, sh a sharp increase in both of those indicates that those cells are being destroyed, as, which is very typical of viral hepatitis, but also maybe toxic hepatitis, right? Or autoimmune hepatitis, something like that. So um, uh, elevated enzyme levels can often be seen before the patient has symptoms, which is um, why definitely this, these tests are all both useful. And elevations of AST and ALT can be seen as much as 100 times the uh, reference range or the upper limit of the reference range. So these um, guys, especially if you got an, an acute viral hepatitis, can go in the thousands pretty quickly. Um, AST, I'm sorry, ALT has a greater specificity for liver disease than does AST. As you saw, we saw a few slides ago, uh, AST could be elevated for uh, muscle or heart causes. So um, if the ALT is elevated, there's a greater chance that there's something going on with the liver. Okay, sorry. Let me get... Sorry, my controls were disappeared for a second. Okay, clinical significance. Um, high AST, you would look at uh, acute myocardial infarction because it's tied to the heart also. Uh, liver disease, obviously. Autoimmune hepatitis, that's liver. Toxic hepatitis from drugs or alcohol, that's also liver. Hepatitis B, hepatitis C, that's also liver. And also hepatitis A, um, fatty liver. So um, that could be uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease or uh, it could be fat, you know, alcoholic fatty liver disease, um, which is um, kind of a silent epidemic. And uh, hemochromatosis, so um, you have too much iron being stored up in your liver, and then Wilson's disease. Okay, high ALT. Uh, any liver disease, you'll see high ALT or elevated ALT. Um, biliary obstruction can also raise your ALTs. Autoimmune hepatitis, um, toxic hepatitis, again, drugs, alcohol, all these liver-related things, hepatitis B and C, but, you know, also hepatitis A and mono. So uh, lab procedures to measure AST and ALT, they're usually measured using a coupled reaction uh, to a specific, uh, specific dehydrogenase reaction. And the 
uh, ultimately you measuring the conversion of NAD to NADH, which NADH is yellow, so there's a formation of that yellow color at 340 nanometer wavelength. So um, for AST, you have aspartate plus alpha ketoglutarate uh, with the help of AST becomes oxaloacetate and glutamate. That's your first enzymatic reaction. And your second enzymatic reaction is oxaloacetate plus NADH and some hydrogen ions with malate dehydrogenase becomes malate and NAD plus. So um, on this one, um, you've got uh, NADH, uh, and this can go either way, converting to NAD. So uh, some of these coupled enzymatic reactions go uh, appearance of the color, some go disappearance of the color, just kind of depends. Um, alanine, uh, for ALT, alanine plus alpha ketoglutarate with ALT gives pyruvate plus glutamate, and then pyruvate plus NADH. And, uh, hydrogen with lactate dehydrogenase give you lactate and NAD+. All right, uh, a few things to remember. Hemolysis should be avoided when measuring AST or ALT because they are present in large quantities in cellular cytoplasm, including that of the red cells, especially AST. ALC will bump up if your uh, specimen is hemolyzed. So just, it's, it's just, it's a good rule in chemistry to avoid a hemolyzed sample, but this one is for sure. Uh, you do not want to use a hemolyzed sample. So a normal range uh, for AST is 10 to 30 international units per liter, and for ALT it's 10 to 40. And that is the end of my quick review video. Thank you for watching.